Hi everyone, I'm Amy Milne with the Quilt Alliance and this morning I'm visiting with Vicki Harrell and she's in Aden, North Carolina and I'm in Cary, North Carolina, which is just uh, serendipitous. We, you know, we met through a, um, someone looking for a quilt to be restored and I thought it would be really interesting to our members to meet you and to get some advice from you um, and my friend Will Alfin just offered the opportunity for us to meet, but I'm sure that um, the questions that I'm going to ask you are probably a lot of people are interested to know. In fact, when we have a booth, we get a lot of these questions. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say welcome and thank you for doing this and ask you to maybe just introduce yourself a little bit about, um, you know, where you are, what got you there. You mentioned that you're originally from uh, the North Carolina, Tennessee, or North Carolina, Virginia border yeah. area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your life. Uh, okay. Um, I um, was born in Portsmouth, Virginia, up in Gates County. And um, my mother had me... Um, she got a new sewing machine when I was about five years old and she wouldn't let me touch it. So she started teaching me how to hand sew. So I, I learned how to hand sew first. And that is my first love of sewing is hand sewing. Um, and by the time I was in the seventh grade, I was making my own clothes. That's when I made my first quilt that I still hadn't put together, but I've got all the blocks. <laughs> and um it's uh it's a hodgepodge of all the clothes that i wore at that time and then um uh, i went to east carolina and became a home economics teacher and i taught for 30 years and um i s lived in fayetteville for a time and took a quilting class and um she had us do a sampler quilt and i did it all by hand hand pieced and hand quilted and that's finished so um i retired about six seven years ago from teaching and i was kind of devastated because <laughs> i miss my kids but, um, a couple of years before that this lady brought me i, I belong to greenville quilter skilled and this okay. came and brought me a what she said was a civil war silk quilt well um this other lady lynn gorgeous heard about it and wanted to see this civil war silk quilt so i went to her studio in newburn and showed it to her and she said number one it's not civil war and number two it's not silk and i said <laughs> i want to know what you know and how you know it so she, she, um, I took lessons from her, um, I'd say about six hours of lessons about how to, what books to get to know what age quilts were like Barbara Brackman's Clues in the Calico. And um, I joined American Quilt Society study group. Right. Quilt study group. I always get it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I read all of their uncovering books and I, uh, I got um, Irma Kurtz uh, videos on how to restore quilts and, you know, saw those and I just fell in love with it. It was, it was exactly what I needed because I'm a very sentimental person. And when, my, when somebody tells me they have a quilt that belonged to their grandmother and can I fix it? I'll go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no questions asked. <laughs> and you know, I, I've not seen, I, I think I saw one quilt one time that was, you know, I, this would take too much money to, you know, fix this quilt. I could fix it, but it just take too much money. But, um, you know, I've, I've, that's how I get my business, just through word of mouth. And um, I have been doing that for the, been doing this for the last seven years. And I've never not had a quilt here to work on. And, wow. you know, um, I'm kind of devoting a lot more time to it now than I was. 
um, I've let go of some of my duties in the quilt guild so I can stay here at the house and say more because it's very peaceful to me. So it I was telling her about my friend Will's quilt who mm -hmm. he thinks was made by his grandmother and I said yeah. God, I just want to do the work myself. I'm so interested in this. It was it kind of sounds like the feeling you had. And she said, well, you should do it. She said, I know, you know, she gave me your name and she said, here's uh -huh. somebody you can contact. Mm -hmm. But she said she was encouraging me. And then I got home and I said, there's no way I, I'm not <laughs> ready for this. I do not have the skills to do this. So that's kind of what made me interested was seeing Will's photos too and seeing the, um, how, important it was to him he's a right, right. he's also a creative yeah. person he's an yes. architect yes, and i yes. think he knew the value of that mm -hmm. piece to his family and there's not anybody around here that that will do it yeah there might be some people who are capable of doing it but um you know want to do it yeah me because i i love it you know and i love to hand sew a lot of people don't like to hand sew they want to zip 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 and get it done you know yeah no not me it takes you know to me a, a quilt needs to have time to be made so what's the first oh go ahead i was gonna say i just love it when i get a quilt because i feel a connection to the maker whenever i'm repairing it you know and uh, like one time I was finishing a quilt that the daughter came to me and she said, my mother quilted a third of this and I want it finished to give to my daughter. Wow. You know, the whole time I was working on it, I felt that mother, you know, mm -hmm. and I made a really pretty um, uh, label for it, you know, for her daughter and she was really pleased. Oh, I bet quilt it but uh, and and put the binding on it and it, it was really pretty it was an improved nine patch with a scallop border mm. and it was real pretty and i look at it you know with the customer i look at it and they always say well how much is it going to cost and i go i have no idea how much it's going to cost but let me go over it. What I do is um, I go over the whole quilt and take clips of uh, pieces of uh, paper towels, little of paper towels and safety pins and put them on the quilt where it needs to be repaired. And so then I can kind of guesstimate how many repairs are going to okay. be. And um, then you know i usually it just depends on the quilt um sometimes i'll do the easiest first sometimes i do the hardest first you know if i have to um find material to replace it i have a lot of feed sacks and feed sack scraps but if i need other kinds of materials sometimes a lot of times i go to the salvation army looking for old material Hmm. And and then I have also, and people know that I collect velvets and silks. So I've got two um, containers of velvets and silks because I have repaired one silk quilt. I mean, one crazy quilt. Um, and I used a lot of ties and then the silk and velvet that I had um, to fix it. Oh, neat. So that... Um that's important isn't it to, to be able to match the fabric as close as yes. you can yes 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 because you you know otherwise it's a completely different quilt yeah you know it's I, not the same it um in the case of will's quilt will's grandmother i think he thought his grandmother had made it what was mm -hmm. the what would you say the age of that quilt was 30s um, yeah, I would say 1930s, yes. Because it had a red chambray was on is on the back and right. the border. And I have never seen red chambray in the store. 
I've only seen it on really old quilts. You know, you see blue chambray all the time. Yeah. But um, you don't see red. And I understand they had other colors too, but you see them in the, in the later quilts like 30s. I mean, early quilts like 30s. Mm -hmm. So. Um, did you have that red chambray or how did you? No, 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 no. What I did was I told him that um, I was gonna have to take probably two inches off of the border all the way around but he would probably never notice that it had been cut down. And I just refolded it and, oh, and did the border uh, gotcha. back on and used the same stitching that she did because all of her stitches showed. And, you know, that's what you try to do. Um, if they do fine stitching, you do fine stitching. If they do crazy stitching, you do crazy stitching because you want it to look as much the same as it did originally. Can you imagine what, do you ever think about, I know you said you think about that maker when you're making it and that gesture that that quilt is going to be with the new regifting of it, but do you ever think about what um, quilter would say about your mimicking their stitches the way they did it? No, no, I've never thought about that. <laughs> Now I just, I think they're smiling down on me because mm -hmm. they're happy that I'm fixing their quilt, you know. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking how critical people are of their oh, own yeah. stitching <laughs> and they'd probably be like, no, just improve it. Yeah. <laughs> Now's my chance, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, the, the rule I've been taught is, is to do it like it's already on there so it looks, you know, so you don't change the quilt. Do you ever have, have you ever restored a quilt that was complete, you knew it was just going to be for show, like they were going to hang it or frame it or whatever? Um, yeah, the crazy quilt I did was going to be lying on a bed. And um, she had found it um, in a uh, chest in the house that she bought. So she had no idea who made it. And this was in Washington, North Carolina. And I, I, if I ever get time, I want to try to find out, you know, who did make that quilt because it was beautiful. I mean, it was, it was the one of the prettiest crazy quilts I've ever seen because every, you know, usually you see on crazy quilts the same embroidery stitches everywhere. With this, had completely different embroidery stitches. Ooh square that was you know patch crazy was different you know so the patch next to each other they there were no two alike at all and it, it didn't have a date on it which was sad but um you know I knew it was around 1900 but she had just found it and it was not finished the border was basted on there but the the quilter had not finished it. So that's what I did. I finished it. And then because of some of the silks had deteriorated, I would either applique over top or um, put mi misty fuse on it to keep it, you know, where the slits are when you get old silk. Yeah. So, um, and she was just going to have it lying on her bed and on a guest bed. So Well, when people bring you a quilt, so the first thing you're going to do is market all the places yeah. that need to be repaired. And mm -hmm. then are you able to just kind of eyeball it and say, okay, this is going to take me about this amount of time. Here's a projection of how much it's going to cost. No, I usually um, work on it for a while before I give them. Well, sometimes, yeah, that I'll try to give them an estimate and I'll tell them if it's going to be more than I will let them know once I get into it. Gotcha. That's good because then they've got that baseline. Yeah. But yeah. Then, yeah. And then some people tell me don't go over this amount. You know, right. so try to try to fix it the best I can, you know, for that amount. So you're flexible in, in working yes. with them yes. in whatever way makes sense for yes. their budget. Yes, yes, yes. And do you send with the quilt? So when you deliver the quilt or that, but you ship it off to the person, do you include pieces of fabric or anything like that? Or is it just? Um, I don't include pieces of fabric, but I do. Um, 
Let's see. I, yeah, I was going to show you this. This is the report that I saw. Oh, cool. And I told him everything I did. And then I'd have pictures. Oh, wow. You know, and say, well, this, this is, um, I didn't write it on mine, but uh, I wrote it on his. This was, you know, really bad. So I, this is where I quilted, where it was gone. And this is where I, uh, I um, there was one place on there. I showed him the needle where I was darning mm -hmm. and was. So I showed him, you know, so yeah, I always include a report like that. That's smart. And then you've got it with the history. Then you can keep yes. it with the quilt too. Yes, yes, yes. I sent him a message and saying that my only regret about this quilt is I didn't make you a label. Oh. So if you will send me the name, who made it, the date and the city, I will make you one free of charge and, you know, send it to you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's, you know, that is so, um, it's so important because I think people maybe that don't have quilts or don't, or anybody that just doesn't really think about it, it doesn't occur to you that that quilt's going to outlive the maker. Right. And, you know, people who are not into quilts go, people still quilt? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's, there's a whole big business. Right. Every aspect that you can think of from historical to modern and everything in between that you can think of. There's a whole lot of people quilting. Yeah, that, that is such a true sentiment. Although, yes. on the flip side of that, if you're ever working on a quilt in an airport or in a waiting room, people will come to you and tell yes. you about their family quilt. Yes, yes, they will. They will, for sure, yes. So it's so funny that that ex yes. duality exists. Every, everybody has a family quilt. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody's got one. Whether mm -hmm. they use it for a dog bed or put it <laughs> their guest bed you know they've got one yep fabric has such uh emotional ties for yes. people well what would you so let's get down to some um best practice advice if you people come um and ask us all the time is it best to put a quilt in a in a pillowcase? Is it best to put it in a bag? What do you, how do you recommend people store their quilts? Well, I tell them to take it out of the cedar chest right away. Right. <laughs> because um, the oils in the, from the wood will get, if it, you know, stays there a hundred years and some do, mm -hmm. it'll, and it will not come out. Um, so I tell them to put it in a pillowcase. The number one best place to put it is on a bed. And I try to take, I have a twin bed in my sewing room that's, that's off from my sewing, I have a bedroom that's off from my sewing room that has a twin bed and I try to put all my quilts on that and lay them out flat. Mm -hmm. You have to put it in a pillowcase, take it out at least twice a year and refold it. You right. Know. Um, and you know, take it out and enjoy it. Look at it. Don't put it in and have sunlight on it, you know, because it it will fade the material. But um the main thing is to get it out of the wooden chest. Yeah. And do you have a particular type of cleaning method or product that you recommend for cleaning quilts that are stable enough to be cleaned? Um, I use all free and clear and color catchers. Mm -hmm. And then if there's any little um, stain on it, I try to determine what kind of stain and I use different things. Um, hydrogen peroxide. I've got some, um, there's a lot of new products from Carbo, the same people that make the color catchers mm -hmm. ink and for rust and for um, uh, ink pens. So, you know, luckily I haven't had to use any of those yet, but most of the time um, just plain all free and clear. Now I've got everything. I've got biz, I've got um, uh, retro clean, I've got Orvis, 
you know, all those products. I use Orvis for, for my linens, that table linens that I get, you know, because um, I collect them too. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, um, you know, mainly all free and clear and color catchers. Basics. Yeah, and I, um, I have, Clear Dawn also, I found that because uh, I, I, that's why I read all those um, Facebook things because they give a lot of really good information. Well, I yeah. used this and it didn't work, or I used this and it ran, and there's uh, Retro Clean and there's, there's something else that starts with an S. So I can never remember what it is, but that's supposed to get bleeding out. Mm -hmm. And I can I never remember what the word is, but if I see it, I know it. If you somebody came to you and said they wanted to start getting into the conservation work, what would you recommend that they do? Well, first of all, they got to love to hand sew. Mm -hmm. If you don't like to hand sew, you know, don't even try. Right. And um, the second thing that I would encourage um, to read Barbara Backman's book, Clues in the Calico. And there's two other books. Um, one is by, let's see, I've got um, Quilt Restoration by Camille Cognac. Mm -hmm. And um, there's another book I just read, Time Span Quilts by Becky Hurdle. They're real good books to read. And I would encourage them to read those books before they get started. Because um, Clues in the Calico helped me to understand why a bubblegum pink is not gonna be in a 1910 quilt. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, you know, cause you, you kind of got to know that, and, and also, um, this is hard, but there's a lot, if you get quilts in the 60s and 70s, it was a polyester cotton hand, and you got to be able to determine cotton, 100% cotton, and then, you know, the, the blends, and then just the plain polyesters. Mm -hmm. You don't want to mix the materials when you're, you know, working, mm -hmm. restoring. Right. And that can be hard with the, some of the blends. You have to learn yes, the, yes. The, the signs. One, one thing I've learned about polyester, if you iron it and it smells, it's got polyester in it. Right. And then you can always do the burn test. Right. I'm forever <laughs> taking things off of little was, seams and goodwill. Like, let me just take this. I used to tell the kids, <laughs> okay, today we're going to start a fire. <laughs> There's nothing like music to the ears of a teenager. Than I like, know, I know. He's got a cigarette lighter. And like, Sir, we're not supposed to have those things. Like, Come on now, I know y'all got someone, somebody in here. Oh my gosh, I bet you were just the funnest teacher. There's no <laughs> one students love yeah, you. Yeah, I, I love to entertain my kids. Well, well, thank you so much, Vicki. I have just loved visiting and... Uh, uh, enjoyed visiting with you too, Amy. Yeah, thank you so much for being a member too. Oh yeah, my pleasure. When I